Shalom, Makiyam, Shalom. Shalom. First off, we're going to say, Call Hello. Yahweh, Bashem, Yahweh Shai, Bashem, Kakodash. We're going to say double honors to the Apostles and the Elders of Great Millstone, of course. Much peace, love, and salutations to all of you out there pushing the word of sincerity and truth. This is GMS Dallas, once again, uh, with a class session. And today, what we're going to talk about specifically is the helmet of salvation. This is a topic that I love to go into. Um, it's something that we spoke about on the highways and byways uh, in our last uh, speaking engagement, a sermon. But I wanted to highlight it here in a class session. Because, you know, brothers have been doing lessons on, you know, having a broad mindset, having a bigger mindset, allowing uh, your imagination to, to, to grab hold of what we read about in the scriptures. And so I want to highlight some of these scriptures and uh, just talk about the importance of visualizing and understanding the the breadth of, of the reward. What are you here for? What are we fighting for? What, are, what, what is this promise? What is this rest? What is this hope of salvation? And really kind of just dig into a little bit of mindset about that today. Okay? Did anybody have any opening statements, comments, or scriptures? I got one. Okay. Uh, this is Psalm 16. I'm just going to jump to the point. Uh, verse... I'll actually read verse 9 and jump down to verse 11. It says, Therefore my heart is glad and my glory rejoices. My flesh also shall rest in hope. Jumping down to verse 11, it says, Thou wilt show me the path of life, mm -hmm. and thy presence is fullness of joy. At thy right hand there are pleasures forevermore. At thy right hand there are pleasures forevermore. So the intention of being on the planet Earth was for us to enjoy it. When Yahweh Shah was up in the heavens and he had uh, uh, the Holy Host with him, constructing the universe, constructing the earth, it was meant for us to come and dominate and have a good life, a immortal life. You know, it, it talks about that in, was it Wisdom of Solomon, the second chapter, I want to say? You know, if somebody can find it. You know, because the, we, this is supposed to be a paradise. When you look up that word Eden, right, that word Eden goes back to joy, all right? And it's supposed to be a perpetual a renewing paradise. And your body in this state that we're in is supposed to rejuvenate continually with it. But because of sin, death was introduced into the world. And since that time of Adam's fall, we lived in a decaying state of being. The hope of our salvation is the renewal of an immortal reality here on earth. That's what we're fighting for. The lives that we've lived here in Babylon, the great in America, has created such a minuscule perspective of what life is that sometimes when we read in the Bible, it, it just completely can go over our head what we really have our hands on. Right. Every time that we go out and have an opportunity to confess this word, we're getting closer to an investment that none of us really can fully grasp and understand. The only thing we can do is read what we what we see in the scriptures and hope to magnify it enough to, to keep fighting. The, the helmet of salvation is critical for you to protect your mind as you go through the battle. So I want to talk about protecting your mind by having increasing hope. Okay? So let's start with 1 Thessalonians 5 and let's have a point. Right, I got it. Hmm? Did you want the wisdom of Solomon? Or? Wisdom of Solomon, yes. yes. All right. <clears throat> uh, this is Wisdom of Solomon. I'm going to read uh, chapter 1, verse 15, and then I'm going to jump down to chapter 2, verse uh, 23. Mm -hmm. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 1, verse 15. I, I started verse 14. It said, For he created all things that they might have their being. And the generations of the world were healthful. And there is no poison of destruction in them. Right. The generations of the world were healthful. Meaning the seasons regenerate plants, vegetation. Everything has a the circle of life. Yeah, Everything right. has that circle, right? And it's supposed to continually have a, 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 a healthy revolution, okay? Go ahead. It says, and there is no poison of destruction in them. Mm -hmm. And it's like just, just laying back and off what the elders talking about, how now that wickedness is, uh, now that wickedness is exceedingly polluted the whole earth. Poison is literally in everything that we see. Poison is in the things that we see. It's in the things that we smell. It's in the things that we eat. You know, it's, it's in the things that we... T it's literally poison in all of our senses that we... Like, we need salvation, bro. Like, if we... If, if Yahweh Shah never came back, we would... You know, there would be no... There would be no flesh left to be saved, bro. Mm -hmm. You know? It says... It says, And there is no poison of destruction in them, nor the kingdom of death upon the earth. Mm -hmm. For right...
righteousness is immortal. See? So righteousness and following after Yahweh Bashan al Shah, that's ultimately what leads to immortality. That's what leads to us conquering death, just as Yahweh Shah conquered death. Yep. That's the tree of life. The tree of life <clears throat> is is a way of immortal interaction with everything. Mm -hmm. A way of immortal interaction with every aspect of life. How to conduct it. The tree of life is the way of wisdom of how to do things perfectly with the, the way the most I intended. Mm -hmm. All right? Yep. Um, jump into Wisdom Solomon 2, and I'll jump, jump down to the point real quick. This is uh, verse, verse uh, 23. It says, For the most high created man to be immortal, and made him to be the image, excuse me, made him to be an image of his own eternity. Mm -hmm. But you're going to read the next verse? Come on, verse uh, 24. Nevertheless, through envy of the devil came death into the world. Mm -hmm. And they that do hold of his side do find it. Right. And so he made and created us to be immortal. Right? right? To continue on perpetually. So our view of time, our view of, 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 of everything is, is really cut cut short the process of everything like you wait 30 seconds and you feel like honking your horn at somebody your mindset our mindsets of time is completely thrown off right. Esau has the world in a shortened rushed state of being that's why everybody is stressed and depressed because it is unnatural mm -hmm. to try to rush all of your life into 20 years you right. know it's unnatural to get to 18, 19, 20 years old and say, oh, I got to them 50, let me, woo! You know, nice so you party. don't think about legacy. You don't think about what happens after. You only think about this short span of time that you have on the earth. This is not life. This is not living. We need hope of salvation, okay? Right. Mm -hmm. I had a, uh, no, no, no. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what you got? Uh, this is uh, going to true life. Uh, Sirach 19 and, and 19, it says the knowledge of the commandments of the Lord is the doctrine of life, and they that do the things that please him shall receive the fruit of the tree of immortality. Mm. Boom. So the way of the Heavenly Father is the fruit of the tree of immortality. And so we're, right now we're, we're, we're getting back through the Holy Spirit, we're getting back into that. And it's going to be accomplished upon Yahweh Shah's return. Right. Okay? What you got, champ? I got a uh, First Thessalonians. Go ahead, champ. Uh, this is uh, First Thessalonians chapter 5. Verse 5, ye are the children of light and the children of the day. We are not of the night nor of darkness. Therefore, let us not sleep as do others, but let us watch and be sober. Mm -hmm. For they that sleep, sleep in the night. If I, if, I'm sorry, if I may real quick, can I get that word sober in the Greek real quick? Because that's a, that's, a, you know, that's a very key word going into what the other is going into, um, being sober-minded in these times. Um, that word sober in the Greek is uh five and six. Why is it not pulling up? Mm-hmm. It's oh good, I got it right here. Okay. Yeah, I don't know why it's showing the wrong. Oh I'm sorry, here we go. My bad. It just took a minute to load up. Mm -hmm. Alright, so that word sober in the Greek here is napho. Alright, napho. So you have uh to be calm. And collected in spirit, to be temperate, to be dispassionate, to be circumspect. Yeah, I'll say knowing, knowing them, uh, knowing the story. We always talk about that. You all say if you're watching a previously recorded basketball game, when your team that when the team that won the game is down by thirty, you ain't tripping because you know they won. Mm -hmm. You just want to see the highlights. You just want to, you know what I'm saying? You just want to get through the game to see what you missed. You see. So, yep. yeah, when it comes to these prophecies, we see them all come in the past and all these different things. And you know, the Lord said this is going to happen. We, now, we see how it play out. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Just like the scriptures say, war, evil, and pestilence. You know, we see that the pestilence is what's going on now. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Ten years ago, we didn't know what the pestilence was going to be. Now we hear them. You know? And, it's, and it's, it continues to boost us. Right? Mm -hmm. right? You got it. Yeah, that was that was, I mean, that was just the word, you know, just to being. Uh, it says that one thing it said was staying calm. Right. You know what I mean? Like with things going on in the world right now, it's easy to get it's easy to get distracted with the things that you see. You know, but the thing is with Yahweh Bashan Yahweh Shah, one thing that he said is said, uh, uh, hope is a is the uh, it's the substance. Faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things that you don't see. 
Right. You know, you don't. We, you walk by faith and not necessarily by the things that you see. You know, so it's, it's walking into the fire, praising Yahweh by Shemal Shai and a calm, collective spirit. You know, that's the having a helmet of salvation is going in, understanding with a, without a doubt that Yahweh by Shemal Shai is with you because you know what he said he would do for you if you, if you serve him. You know, mm -hmm. that was it on that though. Right. Verse 7 it says, For they that sleep, sleep in the night, and they that be drunken are drunken in the night. But let us who are of the day be sober putting on the breastplate of faith and love, and for the helmet, the hope of salvation. For the Most High hath appointed us to wrath, uh, hath not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Hamashiach Yahushai. Right, so as a helmet, we're going to put on the hope of salvation, right? And I like, and that hope is that mindset towards what? Obtaining the promise. Obtaining the promise of going back in, in receiving the inheritance that was that was that was told to Abraham, all the children of Israel, when you read, we're gonna be in that land and thrive, and control and rule and dominate, all right? And so sometimes when we're in this life that we live, we can lose focus on what we're really here for. I'm not gonna pull the scripture, but I love that scripture when Peter asked Yahushua, you know, we gave up everything to follow thee. What shall we receive thereof? And he said, all of those who follow me, going, you're going to receive a hundredfold mm -hmm. of, of wives, of, you know, lands, riches, and you're going to sit on thrones. Right. I want that, don't you? Uh, that was what happened with Job. Right. But can you even imagine it? Can you imagine more than what you have today? Can you imagine more of what you've experienced in this lifetime? Because we haven't experienced much. We really haven't. Never held lands and had servants on those lands. You know? You've been most of your life at work. Yep. You've been like, and when we said this on the highways and byways, tell me a time in your life when some when another man wasn't dictating to you what to do. When to wake up, where you can go, what you can buy, pay your taxes. Dictating to, to you your life. Yeah. You got to keep that helmet of salvation on so you can keep your mind and head in the game. You know? Okay. Anybody got a precept? Yes, I know. Let's go, champ. Okay. This is 2 Corinthians 4, and uh, I'm going to start at verse 16. It says, For which cause we faint not, but though our outward man perish, Yet the inward man is renewed day by day. Essentially, that going into being built up and continually built up uh, in, you know, this truth, man, in the spirit, you know. Because the flesh decays over time, but, you know, our hope isn't in the flesh at the end of the day, man. But read on, verse 17, it says, For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, worketh for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. Right. That's the that's that immortal life. That's the immortal forms. And dominance in the planet Earth. Okay? And we're developing that culture. When you read in the scriptures, low-level people didn't get the scripture. See, they started printing these Bibles and handing them out to everybody and confused everybody into thinking that everybody's supposed to be holding this. No. No. The kings and the scribes held the scrolls. It was meant for the, the elite we are of that class, if you believe it or not, man. The Holy Spirit, when it's blown on you, you get put into a different class. All right? And so you, you so the mindset has to be developed within it. There's a mindset of kingliness that comes along with the priesthood. All right? right and right now, we're just, we're investing. We're investing into the future. An immortal future. So when you invest... You, 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 you waiting. You like, whoa, man, man, I hope this hit. You know, you don't go ball out when, you, when you're fully invested. You're waiting for it to mature. You're waiting for the investment to turn over. And we understand that's with the arrival of Yahusha, right? So we're renewed day by day by what? You're remembering why you made the investment. Right. You're going over the investment that you made. Like, you're going to the stock market, right? You put down $15,000 on a particular stock. And you waiting on it. You're going to be like, man, woo. 
But as you go, what do you do? You you researching in the, the company. You seeing like how how they 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 revenue is increased year by year. You going over you know what type of products and services that they provide. You like man, it's a, oh, man we got the hit. We do that here within the scriptures in the church, right? Going into the mindset and understanding of what Yahweh Hashem Yahweh wants and His intention on the planet Earth. You're investing in something, okay? So you have the hope of hitting. That's that hope of salvation. You got to keep that helmet on. You don't want to develop worldly, earthly sorrow. Where it's like losing something here is impacting you. You haven't lived. You haven't lived. You don't know. You, de- you, de- you, have- you haven't lived, man. Mm-hmm. This little compartment of life has just been slavery. You, you know, everything has been corrupted by death. The food, the air, water, the people, the plants, the animals. This ain't life. You know, uh, if I may add what that kind of makes me think about, like when after uh, Noah, you know, and Shem, Ham, and Japheth, you know, landed um, back on land and everything, and the, like those generations, they got shorter and shorter and shorter. You know, I'm sure that, you know, that was being noticed. You know what I mean? That especially, you know, up to even up to Abraham, even though Noah was alive for a long time uh, after, after, um, well, I'll say Shem specifically was alive for a super long time after, uh, you know, after they after they had their their seeds, um, it's still being noticed that like there was like a downtrend. You know what I mean? To where I'm sure that appealed more to Abraham than maybe some other men that might have lived twice as long as him. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So it's made me think about that. Yeah, yeah. It's gotten weaker and weaker. You got to about that, man. You know, it's gotten weaker and weaker. So there has to be a transition. And I'm, I'm holding Sirac ten and, uh, and uh, seven. It says pride is hateful before the Most High and man. And by both doth one commit iniquity because of unrighteous dealings, injuries, and riches got by deceit. The kingdom is translated from one people to another. So it's our highest expectation upon the return of Yahweh to have this kingdom and rulership over this earth translated to us. What does that mean? That means... Your ability to live life is going to drastically change. I pulled up just for the sake of just understanding a list of minerals in the earth. You see this list, uh, El Diatazak? That's just the A's. Does that feel, do we have to scroll? Man. That's just the A's. That's the B's. Now, for you brothers and sisters that are just listening, there's four columns, and it's, we're just in the A's, and just to, just to have fun, Abel Sinai, Abel Sinai, Abel Sinai. Abel Sinai. <laughs> Abinakai, Aburai, Abramovite, Abramovite, Abram, Abramovite, Abram. that's the name, right, right, Absorbosite, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> A delight. I'm just going through A right, Aliai, Andronite. All we know is amethyst. Bro, <laughs> that's it. That's it. Bro. Look at all of these. Look, 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 look. The bees. Look at all. The, look, look, look at this. Uh, that Bethite, Bakerite, uh, Baal, Baaltite, Bessonite, Biotite, Brassite, Borite, Borax. It's countless B's, C's, D's, F. Look, you have, you don't, we haven't experienced. You're going to own some of those mineral mines and wealth. You're going to have slaves and people that you control and that you tell, we need to move this, this, there. We need this for this industry there. Right? Have you ever been to a cold spring where the water comes out the bottom of the earth and the, the, the natural spring is cold? They have them over in Florida. Mm-hmm. I've been to those. You gonna have your own. There's there's natural hot springs mm-hmm. everywhere in the world. Where healing waters. Like that uh that right? pool, uh that pool at Bethesda uh that pool yeah. that uh, Bethesda I want to say it was where Yahweh uh, went. Yeah. Where the, where the people would actually go down there. Yeah. It was known but you take a shower. Yeah. 
Yeah, you take a you take a shower. Water. Right. You take a shower. Right. A regular yeah. shower head. You're not gonna yeah. be taking no damn shower, Hell bro. No. Nah. Hell no. You're not gonna be taking no shower. Nope. Water You're not gonna. You gonna have time. Right. Yep. That's right. right. You're gonna. You're not gonna water rush. Yep. Oh, I gotta take a shower, man. I gotta go to work. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. I'm put on this itchy ass. So. Up. No, Real you're not gonna do that. Right. You know how many different trees there are in the world? No, you don't, cause you never know have. You don't care. Why? You gotta go to work. Trees in the tree and that tree in the backyard. Right. Yeah. A list of lawful fish. Okay. Elder Yatazak, do you see this list of fish? Yep. Do I have to scroll? Man. Is that a lot of fish? Yeah. How many fish have you ate? I say about six. <laughs> Whitey, Kai. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you remember we went to the cabin? We went to the cabin a couple years ago. Ariana's I had some fish we had in hand. We didn't. We didn't smack them. I'm talking about yeah. licking sauce off your wrist. Bass. That's good. That's the fourth fish you done just, had. Just, yeah. Bro, you probably eating maybe 10, 15 fish. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. You ate more on lava fish than lava fish growing Hundreds up. Hundreds of yeah. fish. You know what I mean? Plant stuff? You ate broccoli, yep. squash. Maybe. Zucchini. 30 or 40 plants you've tasted. Mm-hmm. Maybe 50. There's thousands! Yeah, yeah, depending on where you grow up, you don't get, you don't get the vegetables at all. Mm-hmm. You had cow, chicken, buffalo, yeah. chicken, turkey. turkey. You know how many birds there are? Lamb, man. man. You haven't tasted nothing. Right, right, right. You haven't lived in this sorry pitiful excuse of life. Keep your hope of salvation on and let it protect your mind to do what you need to do. Remember your investment. Remember what you get for putting off this. What are you losing with this, really? Nothing. Not, not really. I'm married. I got some kids. Still. How many of you had a virgin? She thinking about another nigga while you smashing. Oh, you take her to somewhere out to eat. She been there before <laughs> with somebody else. Oh yeah, this is good up here. <laughs> Just tainted, right on. ruined, through. Okay, kids go to school. They come back. My teacher said, "What your teacher said? That's offensive." You see what you got, champ? This uh, is a rock boy. 43 and four, uh, 32 it says, There are yet did greater things than these beasts, for we have seen but a few of his works. We have seen but a few of his works, man. How to really use the power of the sun. You know? How to really, really understand that there's a perpetual energy ball right there. But right. We, they run around drilling for energy. The energy is there. Right. Don't have to drill. <laughs> You just lazy because you die in 50 years. So you need the energy now. Yeah. But when you don't die, you can figure out how to use energy the right way. Mm-hmm. And you ain't tripping. Mm-hmm. You got something? Yeah, I know. Mm-hmm. It's Isaiah 65. Oh, yeah, we're going to get that. What, what verse are you going to go to? I'm going to go straight to 17. No, 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 we're going to go up. Okay. We're going to go up. We're going to come back to that. What you got, Chance? Uh, this is the book of St. John, chapter 14, I'm sorry, verse 1. Mm-hmm. It says, Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in the Most High, believe also in me. Yeah. In my Father's house there are many mansions. Many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. Yeah, man, many, many, many places of domicile and, 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 you know, and I like to stay right here on earth. Everybody's like, well, I'm going to be over in Mar- no, I'm going to be on earth. <laughs> Balling. <laughs> you, we haven't seen the earth. Mm-hmm. I'm going to see it. Yeah, God yeah. damn it. Right. Mm-hmm. Okay? Mm-hmm. The earth got America. This little block. Mm-hmm. Bro, some nice stuff. Yeah. So imagine what's going on in other places and other things, okay? Right. We haven't seen it. Right. Okay? What you got? Uh, uh, that word mansions in the Greek is uh, mune, mm-hmm. which means uh, it says a staying, abiding, dwelling, abode. To make and one's a bold. See, so at the end of the day, you know, like like the elder was mentioning, you have earth. You know, you have many dwellings here that we haven't even really even experienced. But even even so, 
you know, you have different planets that we're going to have access to. We have different galaxies that we're going to have access to. We're going to have the ability to create our own galaxy, to, to, to create our own planet. Ooh. You know, the, whatever is in your mind to want to make, it, 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 according to your spirit, you can make it. It's going to be a whole nother level <laughs> of existence. Yeah. yeah. A whole nother level, man. When you look at the Earth's population, I mean, when you look at the state of Texas, when you research it, the whole Earth's population can fit in this one state. That really shows you how vast this is and how much we haven't seen yet. Man. The whole planet Earth, which is seven plus billion people, can fit in this one state in the whole world. So it really just goes to show you how vast this creation of the planet Earth can really be and how crucial this possession is going to be. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I got some. Mm -hmm. Luke 12 and 32, fear not, little flock, for it is your father's good pleasure to give to you the kingdom. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm saying. Even if you wanted to be a complete loser, the Lord ain't going to allow it. <laughs> like, <laughs> think about that. Think about that. Even if you had the lowest expectation possible for the kingdom. You know what I'm saying? Because the kingdom of heaven get a bad rap. You know what I'm saying? You got people that don't want to go to kingdom, uh, the kingdom of heaven because they don't think it's going to be fun. They think they can have more fun down here. Right. Mm -hmm. Like, nigga, your mind is so small. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And the scripture just, it opened I was up. You know what I'm saying? We completely open to uh, 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 total domination of the earth in righteousness. But that's what that the difference between what they teach the kingdom of heaven is. We understand that the kingdom of heaven is going to be a function. It's going to right. function on earth. Right. This terrestrial form is going to be glorified with the presence of the heavenly Father. Mm -hmm. right. right. And, and we're we going to be with it. You can float around in it. You can float around the kingdom if you want to. Mm -hmm. But it's going to be so much more to it than that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? If you want to float around in the sky. Happen. Do you? But it's gonna be way more. That's just one thing that right. you want to do. Right. Right. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? People ever say people's mind is so closed off. Like no, 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 no. We just gonna float around heaven all day. Mm -hmm. Fine. Yeah. But what we gonna be doing? Right. 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 You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Once your mind open up, I was say we have to, we talk about meditating terror and all these thoughts and all these. Th Bro, you gonna be in a spiritual power, righteous, righteously charged vessel right. doing these things. You know? Yes, sir. Never having a negative, wicked thought. Yeah. Bro, bro, sin is impossible. Think about that. Sin will be impossible. Beautiful. That's like failure being impossible. <laughs> All the worries yeah. that you have are going to be eliminated. Yeah. Stupid, stupid worries. Do I turn I got to sign this paper. I got to get my car registered. Pay the electric bill. I got to pay the electric bill. <laughs> Stupid. You go to the restaurant, you're looking at the, how much is that? <laughs> Stupid. I'm telling you. Look at what she said. She was at work. Is she really at work? Stupid. <laughs> Dang, I woke up late. My alarm didn't go off. Stupid. Mm -hmm. Stupid. None of that no more. Right. Keep the helmet of salvation on. Protect your mind to get through this pilgrimage. Okay, I want to get 1 Kings chapter 10, go down to verse 14, because when we read King Solomon, it gives us just a little inkling and a speck in the corner of our eye of what we're going to have. Now, King Solomon, after uh, King David dominated the heathen roundabout, they established the nation of Israel in the land and pretty much controlled, you know, that region there in the Middle East, right? And so everything was flowing through that region. And so it, 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 it enriched. Hmm? We should. You said, you said the map. want to pull the map out of it and make it pop. Yeah. So it enriched. And you guys can uh, uh, Google this as you listen to this lesson. You know, King Solomon's, uh, King Solomon's kingdom. And, and because he was in control and he had made marriages with uh, different nations and, and, and they had different trade deals, King Solomon, it, I mean, it was just filthy. It was, oh man, man, let's read about it. You said verse 14, right? Yeah. This is uh, 1 Kings chapter 10, verse 14. And it says, now the weight of gold that came to Solomon in one year was 600, three score and six tons of gold. Stop. Read it again. First Kings 10 and 14. Now the weight of gold that came to Solomon in one year was 600, 
three score and six times of gold. And when did that weight of gold come? In one year. So every year, you want to talk about passive income? Right, right, right. <laughs> That's passive income. How much gold? Now the weight of gold that came to Solomon in one year was six hundred three score and six talents of gold. That's one year. That's pa not no dividend meme stock where you get 3% on a little $1,500 that you put down on Robin Hood. No. That's passive income. And that, if I may, that was just coming from the Queen of Sheba. Yeah. That was just coming from yeah. one, one, one um, vassal that was under him. Yep. Now imagine everybody else. And, and, you know, I highlight this one because she came to learn. And when we go to Isaiah, the 60th chapter, it's basically going to highlight that relationship yeah. that we see just right here with the Queen of Sheba. Right. How all the other nations are going to come. And they're going to be like, oh my goodness, teach us what you're doing. We want to thrive like y'all thriving. We want to ball out too. We will pack you. We will, we will bring unto you what we need. Okay? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You know? 600, three score and six, which is 666 talents of gold, is about 25 tons of gold a year. So I was, I was reading this thing here. It says, according to the Bible, 1 Kings chapter 4, chapter 10, um, 1,086 talents, or about 34 tons of gold, were brought to Jerusalem from Ophir by Solomon's workers. This quantity worth about, now this is in today's dollars, so it was, it was more value back then, so mm -hmm. just keep that in mind. It says this quantity worth about 125 million at today's prices is thought to have constituted about half the known gold supply of the ancient world. Half Bro. of yeah. that. Bro. Bro, that's only half. 125 million today is half compared to what Solomon was getting. Bro. And this is that was only one account. Yeah. That was from one kingdom. Yeah. Yeah. Bro. Well, if I can uh, quickly say in uh, my, my sword here, my Bible. You know, verse 14 at the end says it was $3.83 billion. $3.83 billion <laughs> a year. Yeah. Pass. One yeah. pass. I was like, in a short span. Come on. on. But that's, that's, what, that's, what, that's what Deuteronomy 28 and 1 through 14 looked like. In 40, that, that, yeah. was four, that was 40 yeah. years. That was 40 years worth of Deuteronomy 28. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Come on. Yeah, 40 yeah. years worth. Now put yourself in there. Right. Just stop being a. Put yourself in there, man. Yeah. Get your head in the game, man. Don't you want some of that? I'm telling you. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't you want. Come on, man. That's right, support. Keep that on your mind. That's right. You know, I got rage, man. They gave me 25 cents, bro. Oh, you know, they like me because, you know, my boss like me. Yeah, I can come in when I want to. <laughs> Shut your killing, ass up. Uh, killing them at the pot level. Yeah. Come on, man. Let's keep reading in there in King Solomon. I mean, uh, first, first Kings. Okay. This is the book of First Kings, back in chapter 10, verse 15. Besides that, he had of merchantmen, and of the traffic of the spice merchants, and of all the kings of Arabia, and of the governors of the country. He had all that. Keep going. And King Solomon made 200 targets of beaten gold. 600 shekels of gold went to one target. <laughs> and, he, how many, and he had 200 targets. <laughs> Bro, I'm going to read that again. And King Solomon made 200 targets of beaten gold. 600 shekels of gold went to one target. 600 times 200. That's a lot of targets of gold. <laughs> Verse 17. And he made 300 shields of beaten gold. Three pounds of gold went to one shield. Mm. Three pounds of gold went to one shield. Damn. Okay? Now, how much is an ounce of gold? Somebody look it up. The 16 ounces in a pound. Right? Well, we got all these damn smartphones making them be smart. <laughs> how valuable is one ounce of gold? One thousand. Here is information from Markets Insider. Business Insider. What goes in the different types of ounces? Yeah, $1,700. $1,700? Yeah. So $1,700 uh, $1, for an ounce of gold. $1,750, yeah. Yeah, so 17 times 16. 17, 1750 times 16. 1750, uh, 1750 times 16 mm -hmm. is 28,000. 28,000. Now, how many pounds was the shield? Six pounds. 
three pounds, pounds of gold pounds. went to one shield. Times that by three. 84,000, 4,000. So Ooh, one shield costs 84K. And it was 300. <laughs> Times 300. Times 300. He had 300 shields. 25 million, 200. Shields. And shields. Oh, yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's my shields. You know what I mean? I got, I got, I put a line on that one, you know. Dad. Oh, really? Oh, that's nice. That's 25. You know? Come on, man. Come on. Let's keep reading. This is uh, 1 Kings chapter 10, verse 18. I'm um, verse 17. And he made 300 shields of beaten gold. Three pounds of gold went to one shield. And the king put them in the house of the forest of Lebanon. Yeah, he's put, yeah, put it in that house over there. That's my summer home. You know, I, I, I slide through there every now and then. All right, go ahead. Moreover, the king made a great throne of ivory and overlaid it with the best gold. Man, he had a throne of ivory and overlaid it with the best gold. With the best gold. <laughs> Go ahead, champ. Verse 19. A gold-plated ivory throne. What you got? A, a Ikea? <laughs> you know, got that Ikea, that, that rock left and right because the, the thing don't, the thing is broken on the, uh, underneath it? Man. Hmm? <laughs> hmm? Ivory is expensive. You better Overlaid keep that helmet of salvation on and remember what you're here for. That's right. Okay? Right. Somebody had something? I thought somebody said something. Let's keep reading. If you don't um, back in 1 Kings chapter 1, on chapter 10, verse 19, the throne had six steps, and the top of the throne was round behind, and there were staves on each and either side on the place of the seat, and two lions stood beside goodness, the staves. Goodness gracious. How many steps did the throne have? Six. six. Sheesh. Let's go, champ. Keep yeah. reading. I'm say six steps to get up in the chair. Bro, that's what I'm about to say. Come on, man. That's a great Verse 20. And twelve lions stood there on the one side and on the other upon the six steps. There was not the light made in any cave. Nobody had nothing like that. Twelve lions on it, overlaid in gold. Go ahead, champ. Verse 21. And all King Solomon's drinking vessels were of gold. All. All of them. He ain't had no red solo. <laughs> or no blue solo. Or no styrofoam. Man, those None of that. <laughs> <laughs> and all the vessels of the house of the forest of Lebanon were of pure gold. None were of silver. Okay. It was nothing accounted of in the days of Saul. That's what I'm saying. We're riding to work with a sandwich wrapped in plastic. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Fall and shit. They said silver was nothing accounted of. Basically, like, it was... Almost pretty much worthless. Like it wasn't in the gold. scriptures, in the scriptures, it says like how you go outside right now and just see rocks on the ground. Like you just see some little rocks, not not no amethyst. I'm just talking about a fucking rock. They said that silver in the time of Solomon yeah. was equivalent to just you seeing rocks on the ground. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep, yep. Like just oh, just. I got yeah. it. Uh, yes, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. He read verse twenty two. For the king had so like it. For the king had at sea a navy of Tarshish with the navy of Hiram. Once in three years came the navy of Tarshish bringing gold and silver, ivory and apes and peacocks. Bringing it. Bringing it. You know, last night at the camp, Ariala was mentioning having control over how did that get there. You know what I'm saying? Like these couches, this chair, all this stuff. How did it get here? Mm-hmm. We gonna be able to control how all this stuff yeah. got there. Yeah. the wood that was chopped, the, all yeah. that. Yeah, you go to your faucet <laughs> and you turn the faucet on. You gonna that's the result. But what about the origin? How did that water come out that faucet? Right. You gonna control that? You go to the store. There's oranges, and plums, and apples. And, you know. Pancake mix. <laughs> How did it get there? Right. Who did it? <laughs> That's the result. Yeah. You gonna control the whole process. You gonna be with Yahweh and Yahweh shot the whole process. Mm -hmm. yep. You know. Right. These are these those are my my orchards. I got Jack working them. They report to me. 
my numbers. Mm-hmm. That's what Esau's doing right now. That's what he did. Esau don't be at work. Nah, he on the factory. He be chilling. I be, I've be. i been there with Esau. It's happy hour. Not even happy hour. It's not happy hour. Because it's in the middle of the day. One. Yeah. One o'clock. Chilling. I remember one time I was running a trail. It was, it was like it was like 11.30 in the morning. Nice trail. I was I happened to be off that day, so I was in the room for a run. And Esau had a Bluetooth in his ear. You know how Esau does that kind of job, long <laughs> job. <clears throat> but he's talking. He's like, and I'm listening to this nigga, you know. It's like, he said, yeah, just, just, just have him sign that contract. Yeah, that's going to be about 2.5 mil. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. And I know Monday we have another one that's to go ahead and settle that one also too. And I want you to move my Friday. Move that to two weeks from now. I'm going to be, I'm going to be out of town. I'm just listening. Chilling. Yeah. Just, just. <laughs> Cordially talking about millions of dollars worth of contracts like it's nothing. Mm. Now you won't have control over trillions and billions and trillions worth of merchandise mm. in all facets of society. Every single thing that you get, when you read that in Deuteronomy, you gotta go to this man for the want of all things, you gotta go to this man for the want of all things. Well, that role is going to be translated. This is what comes along with the hope, the promise, and everything like yeah, that. Driver stuffy. Hey, yeah. Oh, you gonna have to go to yeah. Oh, my screen ain't crack. <laughs> you know? Yeah, you ain't gonna have to worry about no cracked screen <laughs> on your phone. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. bro, that's bro. This is gonna be over with, man. Mm-hmm. You see? So I like to read this scripture here in First Kings the tenth chapter to highlight a little bit of what we are fighting for. Okay, was there more on it? Do you want to finish? Do you think there's I mean, more that, to it? It's kind of the point. That, that was the point, but just as a little fun little footnote. Yeah. When you go into the peacocks there, because when you look at different regions where the peacocks dwell, certain people will say that those peacocks that he got from India and such. But I remember studying this a while back. When we go into that word peacock, it's very similar to the word toucan. In the Hebrew, in, in the Hebrew it's stakiyon. But if you look at it in Yiddish, it's tuki. But when you look at the toucans, those like come from like South America and such in Mexico mm-hmm. of this side of the hemisphere. We yeah. find it ironic that word for peacock is very similar to the toucans which come from on this side of the earth. Yeah, and that's why it, it mentions once in three years mm-hmm. because that's how long it took to go. Yep. They were coming all the way over here to the to the Americas, collecting, doing that, mm-hmm. and that's why you get the Olmec heads mm-hmm. and everything like that, and then they would travel back. Come once in three years. Then drop off the goods. Man. One more quick little thing. And they they wanted to do it. Yeah. Yeah. They wanted to do it. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. It was like Solomon had to Solomon didn't have to force nobody to do shit. Yeah. You know Mm -hmm. what I'm saying? It was just like this is what I want. And people just made it happen. Yeah. You know? I got another quick one real quick, because you brought up the points going into how it's gonna be the elect's responsibility to, you know, to have foresight over the merchants. Everything pretty much, and it makes me um, go back to the first oh, Kings four when he was establishing his government. This is first Kings four and seven, and it said when Solomon had twelve officers over all Israel. Now that was the the governing body back then. He had the twelve generals, which you had twelve disciples. But even out of those men, you know, it was the left men that he's talking about here, and they had a particular job that they was over. It says when Solomon had twelve officers over all Israel, which provided victuals for the king. And his household, each man his month, in the year made he provision. So it made me think about the kingdom that's to come, because this is just a prelude to what's getting ready to come. How those chief men they had a sole responsibilities to provide those victuals unto the king, and each of those men they had a sole responsibility mm-hmm. to go to the areas that they was over, mm-hmm. to make sure that those um, tidings, mm-hmm. those tidings, I should say, was given. Was, was pretty much operating in unison yeah. to give to the king, yeah. right. and that's how it's going to be with Yahweh. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. So, it, so, it, so they had one month out of the year to be on point, and it gave them plenty of time to prepare to be on point. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. They didn't have to rush. Right. You do when you, you know. So that, that's dope. That's a dope scripture. I might do a lesson on that. Somebody else got something? I got something to Josephus. I want to read real quick. Mm-hmm. So this is uh, the Antiquities of the Jews, Book Eight, Chapter Seven. Ant- Antiquity of the Jews, Book Eight, Chapter Seven. For those who are taking notes. And then Part Three. Part Three. 
So it says, uh, I'm going to read it kind of quickly. It says, Accordingly, there went a great fame all around the neighboring countries, which proclaimed the virtue and wisdom of Solomon, insomuch that all the kings everywhere were desirous to see him, as not giving credit to what was reported, mm. on account of his being almost incredible. They also demonstrated the regard they had for him by the presents they made for him, for they sent him vessels of gold and silver and purple garments and many sorts of spices and horses and chariots and as many mules of his carriages as they could proper, as they could find proper to please the king's eyes by their strength and beauty. This addition then he made to those chariots and horses which he had before from those that were sent him, mm -hmm. augmented the number of his chariots by above 400, for he had a thousand before and augmented the number of his horses by 2,000, for he had 20,000 before. Mm. These horses also, this, I, found this, I, found, I found this interesting, these horses also were so much exercised in order to their making a fine appearance and running swiftly that no others could, upon the comparison, appear either finer or swifter. For they were at once the most beautiful of all others, and their swiftness was incomparable also. Right. So, you know, basically he had a fleet of the dopest vehicles mm -hmm. in, the, in the earth. <laughs> right. <laughs> All right? Now, when you start studying Ferraris and Lambos, you know they only make a certain amount. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep, yep. You, you, know, you, know, you, can, you don't have to do a commercial on something. The people fighting over who's going to get it. Mm -hmm. Right, so 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 what's the symbol of the Ferrari? A horse. What is it? It's a horse, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. So he had a, <laughs> and a Lamborghini. So and Lambo is a horse as well, right? That's a bull. That's a bull. Yeah. Is oh, it a bull? bull? Yeah. Same. Yeah. yeah mm -hmm. It's it, right there in the same likeness. <laughs> right. So so um, imagine your fleet. His fleet. Mm -hmm. Dope. It's a dope. Okay. Mm -hmm. Just like Floyd Mayweather got on Rolls Royces and mm. what's the names? <clears throat> yeah, that shit. His shit whack. <laughs> you gotta, you gotta have insurance and oil change and shit. Right. Think about, man, we're gonna have cherries, bro. Bro, it goes in, it goes in. Go to the suburbs. Everybody got what? Yukon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Honda Accord. Like Suburbans, Escalades. Yep. you gonna have a cherry. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> you gonna have some cherries. Cherry. You ain't gonna have to go, you ain't gonna do none of that shit. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Isaiah, well, Isaiah 4 said, there's gonna be a chariot over every dominion. Right. Mm -hmm. Over every dwelling, there's gonna yeah, be yeah. a chariot just there. Ooh, walk and, up. That, and that's for the Lord to, you know what I'm saying? Shalom, I'm on Would you like to travel today? Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's exactly what I'm gonna do. The spiritual series. Yeah. Tra <laughs> translating you now. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Man, man. Yeah, go ahead. It says, their riders also were a further ornament to them, being uh, being in the first place young men in the most delightful flower of their age, and being eminent for their largeness and far taller than any other men. Come on. Uh. They had also very long, very long heads of hair hanging down, and were clothed in garments of Tyrian uh, ty purple. They had also dust of gold every day sprinkled on their yeah, hair I remember that. Yep. so that their heads sparkled with the reflection of the sunbeams from the gold. Damn. Bro, they was gold every dust. single day they had gold dust being sprinkled on their heads, man. Yeah, so that the sun would reflect yeah. yeah. you, you know, you put that you put that, that you put that you put that dax in your hair. <laughs> you know, with the wave cap. <laughs> You putting the yeah. you put you putting that you know that wave grease in your head, man. Head oh. itching like a motherfucker. <laughs> they put gold in dust their in their head every man. day. So when you walk around, bro, you know how good that is for your for your mind and just for your head, just in general for you, bro. It was, it was it said it said it said it said so that their head sparkled. With the reflection of the sunbeams from the gold, bro, so you just you bro, shining when you walk out. Think that you clean, bro? Do you know how clean it is? Yeah, it <laughs> <makes some> sense, <laughs> man. You're probably going to the king. We'll talk about the easy, bro. <laughs> easy. You walking around with gold dust in your beard and your hair, bro? Yeah. Just that you was talking just about flexing on somebody. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That was just yeah. a service. 
Wait, is that glitter? No, baby, it's, it's gold. gold. <laughs> yeah, right. And the glitter's like, oh, baby. Yeah. Everything with glitter ain't gold. Yeah. Bro, that was his. Everything that glitter's in gold, baby. <laughs> that was his, bro, that was, that was his riders of the horse. That wasn't even, that was his servants. Yeah. That wasn't even him. Clean. His servants was Clean. golden and decked out, man. Right. I'm going to finish this up real quick. Can I uh, piece up to kind of land back on Yeah, go ahead. Uh, well, I got to start in verse 41. This is Matthew 13 and 41. It says, The Son of Man shall sign, shine, uh, send forth his angel, and they shall gather out of his kingdom all things that of them which them which do iniquity, and shall cast them into a furnace of fire. There shall a welling and gnashing of teeth. Then shall the righteous shine forth as the sun, mm. as, in, as in the kingdom of their father, who has ears to hear, to let them hear. And that's like the prelude of what's going to happen after that destruction when the bringing forth of the kingdom of heaven is brought forth. That's right. And if, if I may, you know, um, it just goes to show you how much we should really desire this wisdom. Because even in Proverbs, it likens wisdom to be more far exceeding the rubies of gold or any Man. precious stone. Yeah. You know, so if we desire that and yearn for that right now, by default, if it's the Lord's will, this is going to apply to us. And we don't even have the full, thorough understanding yet of what's going to happen in that day. This is all just a glimpse. What we're reading in the, about Solomon and such is it, still a mirror that's still foggy as heck, and you can barely see the other side of it, man. We've been this in this apartment too long, man. Yeah, we've been in this cycle bull too long, cycle mm -hmm. death too long. And, 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 and it's so bad that our people don't even feel like they deserve these things. Right. Yeah. You know? And that's why we have to lean on you. How about you, man? Shy, man. We have to lean on them to, 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 to even just to, to push forward. Keep the helmet of salvation on. Protect your mind. Don't let this world bring you down to, to feeling like you just got to survive. You just got to survive and do the best you can. No, we are, we are meant to thrive. Get out of that survival mode and get into thriving. You are, you're making an investment. You're making an investment towards something that's amazing. You're not losing anything. Right. You're not losing nothing. This has all been polluted and tainted. We were going to get Michael, but we don't need to pull it. Rise ye up and depart, for this is not your rest. It's polluted. Just like, the earth was given, just like the earth was given into the hand of the wicked, it's going to be given into the hand of the righteous. And in the Apocrypha, it tell you that the, the, uh, the earth was made for our sakes. Right. Mm -hmm. It was made for us. You Come see, on now. We're going to be given the same earth. Esau done jacked up. Right. <laughs> it's going to be the same earth. Right. You know? right. But, the, but the scriptures say that the earth is going to abide forever. Got Who it. you think of? Yeah, we, 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 we focusing on forever. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we focusing on forever. There ain't going to be no apartments in forever. Yeah. Right. yeah. You know, and if there is, I'm not going to be up in it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Look. <laughs> What we've experienced here in this life, don't let it taint your mind. Right. Don't listen to nobody that says you need to just enjoy it all now. Enjoy what? Right, right, right. right. Enjoy the ten fish and the twenty plants and the five meats and the one and woman. The used up woman <laughs> and the <laughs> one you know you gotta hide <laughs> and the crack phone. <laughs> yeah, the crack phone. Oh, yeah. The fake gold. GMO smoothie. All right, and the Chinese made Yeezys. <laughs> Listen, <laughs> there's so much more. Mm -hmm. There's so much more. Okay. Now where we at? Matthew 16. Yeah, somebody get that. Matthew and somebody 16. Hold up, Deuteronomy 28. Matthew uh, 16. Matthew go 19. to uh, verse 19. And what was you hold not? Uh, Deuteronomy 28. Beautiful. Let's get Matthew 16. We pulled this out yesterday. We're going to read it again. It's the book of Matthew chapter 16, verse 19. And I will give unto thee... Sorry, 18. It's in Matthew chapter 16, verse 18. It says, and I say unto thee, uh, thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Mm -hmm. um, it says, and I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven. You go, Bro, he gave Peter the keys... Right. Of the kingdom of heaven, that's access. That's power. Mm -hmm. Yep. All right. When you have the, the the keys to your apartment, right? You uh, you whatever you 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 control who come in and out. Mm -hmm. You control what goes on, right? 
keys to your car, the keys to whatever. The keys to the kingdom of heaven were given to Peter and his homies. Now, go ahead. So we need that word keys. Mm -hmm. Okay, that word keys yep. in the Greek is uh, pronounced. It's pronounced police. All right, police. And that word keys here means. Hold on a little bit. It says, um, man. <laughs> it says the power of David. Mm -hmm. Who was a type of the Messiah the second day, which you know you got to pick your bones or whatever, of receiving into the Messiah's kingdom and of excluding from it. The key. It says the keeper of the keys has the power to open and to shut. Metaphorically in the New Testament to denote power and authority of various kinds. <laughs> but it says that, but the key, the key uh, the key point, right? Like what said what? It said uh it said uh, the power of David. Right. Now, somebody get David. David. Right. 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 <laughs> somebody get Jeremiah 31. Somebody get Hebrews 8. Get those covenants. And then we're going to get um, Deuteronomy 28 and 1. Before that, real quick, <clears throat> read that Isaiah 60. You want oh, to start yeah. somewhere specific? Start at the top. At the top. <clears throat> the book of Isaiah chapter 60 and verse 1. It says, Arise, shine, for thy light has come. And the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. Mm -hmm. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth, and gross darkness the people. But the Lord shall arise upon thee, and his glory shall be seen upon thee. Now you connect this with 1 Thessalonians 5th chapter that we read opening up. Go ahead. We're the children of the light. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Of the day. Verse 3. And the Gentiles shall come to thy light, and the kings to, thy bri to the brightness of thy rising. Like the Queen of Sheba did. Go ahead. Verse 4. Lift up thine eyes round about and see. All they gather to gather themselves together, they come to thee. Thy son shall come from far, and thy daughter shall be nursed at thy side. Mm -hmm. Then thou shalt see and flow together, and thy heart shall fear and be enlarged. Mm -hmm. Because the abundance of the sea shall be converted unto thee, the forces of the Gentiles shall come unto thee. Go ahead. Verse 6. The multitude of camels shall cover thee. The the drum, drum, dromedaries, dromedaries of, of Midian and of all they from Sheba shall come. All they from Sheba, look, it's even mentioned. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. They shall bring gold and incense, and they shall show forth the praises of the Lord. Mm -hmm. All the flocks of, of Kedar shall be gathered together unto thee, the rams of ne mm -hmm. Nebaioth. Yeah, and real quick, that word forces, I wanted to just highlight it real quick. The forces of the Gentiles are going to come. Uh, you know, the word, uh, was it, uh, chayal? Strength, might, efficiency, wealth, army, mm -hmm. ability, efficiency, efficiency, wealth. These are the things that we're going to be getting, man. Human resources. Mm -hmm. Human resources leads to all the other re resources. Because you, you can't have a utopia without slaves. See, when Esau had us in hardcore slavery, they were in utopia. Mm -hmm. They fucked up. Yep. They should have kept us in slavery. You cannot have utopia without someone to function the utopia for you. Right. And provide happiness. See, and they want to recreate that type of system digitally to where you're a digital slave. Mm -hmm. So they can sit back and just enjoy everything. That's why it says in the fullness of this Sufficiency, he shall be in dire straits. Right? The Most High is going to translate this kingdom and all the other nations are going to come to us to learn how to manage the resources of the earth. And, and because of that know-how and knowledge, we are going to benefit in a utopia type of setting. That's just... We're going to teach everybody how to make things immortal. Mm -hmm. Right? We're going to put, be put into an immortal form, which your brother is going to get. And because of that knowledge, wisdom, and understanding that's going to be put into us, immortality is going to be issued forth, and the people are going to respect it. That's right. And when we talk about glory, the word glory has different functions. Mm -hmm. Glory has a function of knowledge, wisdom, understanding, raw power, right. and a chariot, right. celestial energy, Absolutely. holy energy. Glory has holy energy, like the chariots, the sun, the moon, stars, celestial energy. 
raw power, knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. These are the things that we're going to inherit the glory of Yahweh and Yahweh to dominate the earth. You're going to have raw power, full knowledge, wisdom, and understanding, and access to celestial energy and power, meaning a chariot. Yep. Ain't that cool? The powers that even brought out the sun. Mm -hmm. Your, our celestial energy is going to be more powerful than even the sun. Man, bro, it's better than being in this apartment. I'm trying to tell you. I'm trying to tell you. It's, it's, better, better, than, it's, it's better. better than having a uh, 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 Karakma, too. Yeah. Um, absolutely. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. yeah I'm saying that Karakma ain't finna make you ball out. You're not finna ball out right. with yeah. that. Right. Right. Yeah. All right, let's get the uh, last couple okay. precepts. Isaiah 60 and 7. All the flocks of Kedar shall be gathered together unto thee. The rams of Naboth shall minister unto thee. They shall come up with acceptance on mine altar, and I will glorify the house of my glory. Yeah, yeah. With, who are these that fly as a cloud? Uh oh. And as the doves to their windows? Surely the owls shall wait for me, and the ships of Tarshish first. To bring thy sons from far, their silver and their gold with them, unto the name of the Lord thy power, and to the Holy One of Israel, because he hath glorified thee. Verse 10. See how the chariots was locked within that glory? Mm -hmm. Did you see that? Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Verse 10. And the sons of strangers shall build up thy walls, and their kings shall minister unto thee. Who gonna, who, who, who gonna build the wall? You? Hell no. <laughs> It's not tall enough. More gold. Move that line over there. We need that window open. The sunlight's going to do this and create that. You, shut up. Yeah. Hey, that's what Trump was doing when yeah. he was building the wall. Did he actually go out and build the wall and say, all right, let me go ahead and get yeah. the hammer in? No, he, he employed other people to do that job. Mm -hmm. Isaiah 60 and 10. And the sons of strangers shall build up thy walls, and their kings shall minister unto thee. They're going to serve. The chiefest of the people of the, of the other nations are going to serve. Go ahead. For in my wrath I smote thee, but in my favor have I had mercy on thee. Go ahead. Therefore thy gates shall be open continually. Mm -hmm. They shall not be shut day nor night, yeah. that men may bring unto thee the forces of the Gentiles, well. and that their kings may be brought. You know what markets never close? The Forex markets. You said which markets? Forex. 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 Foreign exchange. Oh, Current. okay. Currency. Money. Interesting. Never closes. Currency flows. Always. That's yeah. the word current. And it's always flowing. Wow, okay. <clears throat> Makes sense. All money is is the representation of the flowing of goods and services mm -hmm. from one place to another. Goods and services are always current in a current flow. You're going to be in control of it. Ooh, that was good. Ooh, <laughs> 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 that light just came off. You're going to be there, brother. With Yahweh Shah and the rest of the men and everybody. With the currency of the earth. The wealth of the earth. When you read in Revelation, the 18th chapter, we're not going to get it. But it talks about the downfall of Babylon the Great. And one of the things that I like to, that I notice, is how powerful Babylon the Great was. Right. We read how the merchants of the earth welled because of her burning. And you read about everything that Babylon the Great controlled. Mm -hmm. That is going to be translated to the nation of Israel. Okay? Verse 12. For the nation and kingdom that will not serve thee shall perish. Yeah, those nations shall be utterly wasted. The glory of Lebanon shall come unto thee, the fir tree, the pine tree, and the box together, to beautify the place of my sanctuary, and I will make the place of my feet glorious. And the sons also of them that afflict thee shall come bending unto thee, and all they that despise thee shall bow themselves down at the soles of thy feet, and they shall call thee the city of the Lord, the Zion of the Holy One of Israel. Bro, 
Amen. When you don't feel good, go read Isaiah, the 60th chapter. Amen. And put on your helmet of salvation. Yes. And remember why you're here. And remember what you've given up and what you're going to receive thereafter. This is an investment. This is an investment. Can somebody look up the definition of investment? We can stop there and, and, and go to the next two scriptures. Call them. Uh, Jeremiah. Uh, yeah, I got something. Alright, go ahead. And then uh, get Jeremiah and then uh, Hebrews 8. Oh, uh, no, no, no. Go ahead and bring your priest on that time. Uh, get to the root, chapter 4, um, verse 23. For I sent you out with mourning and weeping, but Yahweh will give you to me again the joy and gladness forever. Like as now the neighbors of Zion have seen your captivity, so shall, so shall they see shortly your salvation from our power which shall come upon you with great glory and brightness of the everlasting see that was saying and these are the precepts that we hold on to the hold fast that which is good that's what I'm saying everything else that we've been told is a lie right all these precepts have come together to give us that hope right that hell of the salvation that they're going into you know all right let's go I got the definition of a uh... Investment too. Get a chance. Investment says the action or process of investing money for potential, uh, excuse me, for a profit or material result. Also, a thing that is worth buying because it may be profitable or useful in the future. Boom. And, and that's and us storing up our treasures. Buy the truth and sell it now. Yeah. Yeah. Right? right. And he's storing up our treasures in heaven. Yep. You see, all, all, the, all, of our work, all of our works, we're going to get paid that mm -hmm. penny. Absolutely. We're going to get paid that penny, which is the kingdom of heaven. Bro, buy the truth and sell it now. Right. Bro, you see a dip in the market, you buy it, it goes exactly. a little bit, you sell it, then it keeps going up. Mm -hmm. You be like, dang, I should have. Yeah. Uh, what they call it, hot, hot. Yeah. Hold. Hold. Mm -hmm. Steadfast. Yeah. yeah. Hold, steadfast. What else you gonna hold yeah. on to? Hold. Yeah. You, can't hold you can't hold on steadfast to nothing in Babylon. Right. In, 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 in investing, they say you want, a, you want something that's gonna go up in what direction? To the right. Mm -hmm. If it's not, you want something that's going up and to the right. Mm -hmm. What we have is going up mm -hmm. and to the right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Off the charts. Yep. Yeah. It's still at point zero 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 one cents, so and yeah. it's going to go up to a minute. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's what, the, that's what, if I may ask what Yahweh Shah mentioned with the mustard seed, you say if you have faith of a mustard seed, it's going to sprout into this large, this, this large tree that is very vast and great, which is the kingdom of heaven, you know? Don't worry about, no, 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 no shots. Don't worry about no job. Don't worry about no relationships. Don't worry about none of that. That's right. Mm -hmm. it's, all, it's all temporary in the way and the value of it doesn't compare. That's right. It don't compare. You're not missing out on nothing. You, you can't, even if you had billions of dollars in this life here, you can't really do nothing with it. Okay? We're in the kingdom. We read about it. Huh? We read that definition of the word power yesterday, mm -hmm. and how this went, it went into so like that definition of power and revelation. It went into so many things. It went into like having control over the uh, the resources, uh, power to bring plagues, power of the people, uh, uh, judicial decisions, domestic oh. relations, yeah. power over uh, uh, marriage, and, and power over your woman. Yeah, it, it literally said it. it yeah, it, it, as a husband has authority yeah. over his wife. That's what it said. You see, yeah. I stuck in my mind. I got a quick one. Uh huh. This is uh, 1 Timothy 1 and 7. For the Most High has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. He said, Don't worry about these things. It says power first, then it says having a sound mind. And that's keeping the mindset of knowing the investment that you're making and knowing the return that you're about to get if you keep on putting that penny in there. That's right. You mentioned about the mind. They proved that this is the ultimate mental game. Absolutely. This is a, because it starts here. Say, cast down the imaginations, what imagination? Yep, everything is in the mind. Okay? 
Let's go, Cam. Ju- uh, Jeremiah, Jeremiah, Jeremiah 31, 8, and then we're going to finish up with uh, uh, Deuteronomy 28. Okay. Go ahead. This is Hebrews 8, 1 through 8. 1 through 8. For this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel. Uh, the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel. Go oh, ahead. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, after yeah. those days, say the Lord, <clears throat> I will put my laws into their mind and write them in their hearts. I this will is put the tree of life. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I will put the laws in their inward parts. Right? No sin will be impossible at that point. Sin will be impossible at that point. Read it again. I will put my laws into their mind and will write them in their hearts. Right? Go ahead. Talk about our mind. Right? Go ahead. And I will be to them a God, and they shall and they shall be to me a people. Now keep in mind, this is after the, our bodies done changed. We're not we're in those perfect bodies. Mm-hmm. We got the perfect mind. All these things, right? Now go back to Deuteronomy 28 and 1. Finish that. And then somebody hold Deuteronomy 28 and 1. And, and when we get to Deuteronomy 28 and 1, it's not going to be if you hearken to this day, because we already going to be in the body to hearken. Let's just read it on through, right? Finish that up. And they shall not teach every man his neighbor and every man his brother, right. saying, Know the Lord, for all shall know me. That's what I'm saying. We're going to all be perfect. We're going to be his people and he's going to be our power, right? right? Let's get Deuteronomy. Let's start at the top. It's the book of Deuteronomy. You're going to read down to 14. Chapter 28. Just read, stri- just read it straight on through. We're not going to interrupt. Mm-hmm. Just mer- meditate on what the brothers read. That's for the, that's for the people that's listening to. Come on. Deuteronomy 28 and 1. And it shall come to pass, if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy power, to observe and to do all his commandments which I command thee this day, that the Lord thy power will set thee on high above all nations of the earth. And all these blessings shall come on thee, and overtake thee, if thou shalt hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy power. Blessed shalt thou be in the city, and blessed shalt thou be in the field. Blessed, blessed shall be the fruit of thy body, and the fruit of thy ground, and the fruit of thy cattle, the increase of thy kind, and the flocks of thy sheep. Blessed shall be thy basket and thy store. Blessed shall be thou, so like it, blessed shalt thou be when thou comest in, and blessed shalt thou be when thou goest out. The Lord shall cause thine enemies that rise up against thee to be smitten before thy face. They shall come out against thee one way and flee before thee seven ways. The Lord shall command command the blessing upon thee in thy storehouses and in all that thou settest thine hand unto. And he shall bless thee in the land which the Lord thy power giveth thee. The Lord shall establish thee and hold the people unto himself as he has sworn unto thee, if thou shalt keep the commandments of the Lord thy power and walk in his ways. And all the people of the earth shall see that thou art called by, my, by the name of the Lord, and they shall be afraid of thee. And the Lord shall make thee plenteous, plenteous in goods, in the fruit of thy body, and in the fruit of thy cattle, and in the fruit of thy ground, in the land which the Lord swear unto, thee, unto thy fathers to give thee. The Lord shall open unto thee his good treasure, the heaven to give the rain unto thy land in his season, and to bless all the work of thine hand. And thou shalt lend unto many nations, and thou shalt not borrow. <laughs> and, and the Lord shall make thee the, the head and not the tail. And thou shalt be above only, and thou shalt not be beneath. If thou hearken unto the commandments of the Lord thy power, which I command thee this day to observe and to do them. Hey man, put that helmet of salvation on. Understand why you're, what you're fighting for. We talk about the destruction, we talk about the pestilence, we talk about the calamities, we talk about all these things and the tumults of the people and the, and, and the wrath that the Most High is going to bring. But is that why you're here? That's not why you're here. What is your hope? What is your true hope? What is at the forefront of your mind to put you in a place to cast off this world? You're not casting off the world to see destruction. You're casting off this world for a better life, for a mortal life, for righteousness to set to come. You have to put away the pettiness of, the, of a small part justice. True justice is when things are corrected. 
And that's not going to happen until we are put in the place to where in our minds, in our hearts, we follow Yahweh Shalom Shai. Right? The downfall of this world is a small piece of the reality that we're fighting for. Put on the helmet of salvation. Protect your mind. Allow that knowledge to give you fuel. Collective hope or collective faith is fuel. It's fuel. It's energy. When you have more faith, you take more risk. You're going into risky times. <coughs> when you hope, you'll bet it all on black. Bet it all on one four four. That's right. You know what I mean? Okay. With that man, call hello. Yeah, how by Shem, yeah, was shy by Shem Kapadash. Double honors once again to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone. Much peace, love, and salutations to you. I came out there pushing the words to Syrian truth. We appreciate you riding, whoever made it to the end of this broadcast. Hey, go and tell somebody else. Shalom. Shalom. Shalom.